food of the gods. The substances that all through the ages have helped us alter our awareness, our perception of reality. Terence McKenney is a writer, a speaker, and in fact an activist. And what's your feeling when I say drugs? Well, drugs is a word which has polluted the well of language. Uh, part of the reason we have a drug problem is because we don't have an intelligent language to talk about substances, plants, psychedelic states of mind, sedative states of mind, states of uh, amphetamine excitation. Uh, we can't make sense of the problem and the opportunities operated, offered by substances unless we clean up our language. Drugs is a word that's been used by governments to make it impossible to think creatively about the problem of substances and abuse and availability and so forth and so on. In the minds of the people, the word drugs, which was once used as healing medications, and still drug companies that make, uh, I don't know, Tylenol are, are considered very legitimate. Well, Yet so is, it's a kind of a paradox, isn't it? Drugs mean that which cures us and the greatest social problem of the generation. So they're right there. You see the schizophrenia involved in thinking about drugs. Apparently there are good drugs sanctioned by science and medicine and bad drugs uh, used by brown people in strange rites and growing in unusual plants in distant parts of the world. Uh, this kind of thinking, because it's naive, leads, of course, to social problems and bad politics and bad social policy. Your stance has been to at least look for what you call those strange plans and strange substances in, in strange places. You have been, you originally were a botanist, or you still are. Yes, and uh, from the time I was very young, I was fascinated with the idea of extremely dramatic changes in consciousness from which one recovers after a few hours induced by plants. And I discovered through the writing of Aldous Huxley and other people that this was a worldwide religious uh, and cultural phenomenon that my own Catholic middle-class upbringing had, uh, had completely overlooked and uh, and denied and I've been fascinated with it ever since you know it's a it's a bit like sexuality it's something which the Calvinist intellect would just prefer didn't exist but in fact the phenomenon of being human beings in animal bodies with uh, a relationship to nature makes it important for us to address these altered states of consciousness and the plants the substances and the cultural institutions that come into being around these things. Your, your thesis in many books has been that these substances have had a far greater influence on culture and still have and will have than most people would like to accept or like to see. Yes, I mean, to my mind, human history is the story of one substance after another distorting or transforming human values and society. A perfect example would be sugar. Most people don't even think of sugar as a drug, and yet we may think cocaine distorted moral and political values in Latin America, but sugar brought back slavery. Slavery actually died with the Roman Empire. Nobody worked agricultural products with slaves in the Middle Ages. It wasn't until uh, the early 1400s that the Portuguese began producing sugar and they used up Jews and prisoners and so then they started buying human beings from African, from Arab traders. And the Pope was in on the deal, and everybody was in on the deal. I mean, this is drug corruption of the central institutions of society on a massive scale. Uh, but that has gone on 
till our days we have uh, alcohol, we have uh, tobacco? Well, this is my very point, that every society chooses a small number of substances, no matter how toxic, and enshrines them in its cultural values, then demonizes all other substances, and uses, uh, and then persecutes and launches witch hunts against those users whenever some political pretext requires witch hunts and persecutions. So it's an old game, and it's been played in many places. Hopefully, part of the advancement of society toward ideas of universal human rights and that sort of thing, it certainly must include the idea of the universal human right to take responsibility for and to alter your own state of consciousness as you see fit. Uh, I don't think we can even pretend that we are on the edge of a civilized dialogue until we grant that people's uh, minds, like their bodies, must be a domain free from government control. In American law, we have the notion of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If the pursuit of happiness means anything, it must mean the right to use and experiment with substances and plans. But do we need, say, more research, or uh, do we know all we need to know about entheogens or hallucinum? No, no, we need endless amounts of research. The fact that these things have been illegal uh, in most countries for 50 years means there is a, a huge lag in understanding the impact of these things on human beings. How many people have taken MDMA and yet MDMA has not been thoroughly studied by science? How many people have smoked DMT? Same thing. In a way, by making these drugs illegal, we're setting ourselves up for a potential catastrophe someday when some side effect is overlooked because the drugs were not rationally reviewed uh, with an eye not toward keeping them out of the hands of the public, but with an eye toward public safety and educating the public in, in safe use of these things. We, the state should not, in the matter of drugs, any more than in the matter of sex, act as the secret agent for the agenda of the church. And that's what's happening. Uh, uh, people want to stimulate themselves. They want to explore their consciousness. They want to sedate themselves. Who are we to stand in their way with a moral ideology uh, and the long, heavy arm of the law to interfere with that? It's, it distorts civilized values. But that's, that's the bottom line. Drug repression uh, distorts uh, civilized values and political discourse. Many people emphasize the, the bad effects of, of using, uh, I don't know, LSD, um, DMT. Do you think there are positive effects in general, and are there positive effects that are yet to be discovered? Well, yes. Uh, I mean, anyone who has actually been around people using psychedelics know they have uh, tremendous therapeutic potential, tremendous potential to launch people into confrontations with aspects of their personality or their history that they are in denial of. Uh, the people who hold that these uh, psychedelic substances have no application have very little uh, actual personal experience with them. It's the old story of my mind is made up, don't confuse me with facts. <laughs> <laughs> Would psychology be further ahead? Would you have learned more about the way the human mind works on itself in an interaction with others if the research, say, on the use of LSD or Ibogaine or many, many of these substances would have proceeded in an orderly and what you could call scientific matter, a way? Yes, I think it's a great tragedy of 20th century science that the original excitement about exploring consciousness and mental illness generated by the discovery of LSD gave way 
to establishment paranoia and uh, and uh, repression of drug using populations the excitement in psychology when LSD was first introduced was like the excitement in the physics community when the atom was smashed and everybody thought well now we'll understand mental illness schizophrenia uh, the memory so forth and, so. and instead the government lost its nerve because it saw that these substances have a potential for deprogramming people uh, to institutional values. And that was so terrifying that all the promise for mental illness and creativity studies and so forth and so on was sacrificed to institutional paranoia about the fact that drugs might actually cause people to wake up to some of the of the abuses and scams that were being run by late modernism and uh, capitalism clear thank clear. you Terrence. thank you <laughs>